what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will discuss about the april 2018 horoscope we will give and try to see what's going on in the sky in the constellations all right so if you're new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please 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 subscribe to it as sun will move into its sign of exaltation in aries in 15th yes and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website it's there in the description below and if you like this video click the thumbs up and if you want me to make any other video then please let me know in the comments all right there you go so the month of april is starting uh, actually before april starts i would say about the full moon which is which will be there in virgo on 31st march so on march 31st the sun uh, and moon as every month it happens once it will be forming the distance between seven houses from each other so there's this full moon in virgo so sun will be in the sign of pisces and moon will be in the sign of virgo on march 31st so what happens then is the month of april starts with this full moon yes so uh, what the, does this full moon represents this full moon basically represents our ability to incorporate the higher aspects of life which is uh, pisces our divine aspirations our spiritual goals our abstract thinking our abstract philosophy uh, with the sign of virgo it's the alignment virgo is what practical ground level reality yes real stuff which is going on so when we try to harmonize our abstract higher thinking with our practical scenarios then this full moon occurs yes and when this full moon is going on then this month will begin with an introspection of trying to see what's there in the ground yes rather than being in the sky like the sign of pisces so that is how the month begins and uh, we have jupiter in retrogression and saturn is also going to be retrograde all right so now i would say how this month starts so i have my notes below so i'll be staring at it and seeing to the camera also so sun is still in the sign of pisces in april 1st then mercury is also in pisces venus is in aries by the time april starts then rahu is in the sign of cancer as usual ketu is in capricorn moon will be in virgo jupiter is in libra in retrogression and it will be retrograde till 10th of july all right and mars and saturn will be in sagittarius this is an important combination both will be in uh, the sign of purva ashada as the month starts mars will leave mula nakshatra and saturn has already left mula nakshatra just a while back and saturn will become retrograde from 18th april to september 6th yes and then mercury is also retrograde from 23rd march to april 15th so this is how the month is beginning now what's happening is uh, the sign of pisces becomes very important in the initial days because the solar energy which is the sun the fire the power in the chart the focus that is in the sign of pisces so wherever sun is there for that month as the day creeps in those things become uh, lively it becomes very active so now what's happening sun mercury are in the sign of pisces so mercury is in debilitation yes so that means um, our uh, ability to communicate our ability to grasp things and put it down into practical reality that can be a bit challenging but then sun is also there in pisces so there's a lot of hope that we can overcome that yes there's a lot of energy there and pisces is the highest of the uh, philosophical signs it is more philosophical than even sagittarius scorpio because it's the 12th house yes it's the original 12th sign so that is why uh, mercury in pisces can be very good for our uh, philosophical thinking yes our abstract thinking and then what happens is sun is also there so we try to accept things for what they are yes because 12th house is what basically letting thing letting go of things so sometimes it can happen that we have been trying 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 to do so many things but 
it is not working so then what happens we try to understand and harmonize and make peace with the fact that sometimes some things cannot be changed which is perfectly fine because it's not necessary that every time we can change everything yes so this month starts with this and then venus is in aries in the beginning so what does this mean aries is a very fiery energy so mars will be in the nakshatra of ashwini ashwini is a very dynamic very forceful very passionate very uh, outwardly nakshatra yes so which represents the ashwini kumaras the horses yes so basically what happens is the sign uh, is of the horse so horses are very fast and they are very dynamic and they are extremely vigilant yes and they are very extreme they are extremely cautious and they are very conscious of things so now when uh, venus was in pisces it was in exaltation so and now from there it goes into the sign of aries which is all about initiation so we will see that uh, many people are coming out to have experiences of uh, romance love sexuality dating will increase because when venus comes into aries aries is a fire sign it's like there's too much fire so then venus feels like taking action any planet in fire signs always feels like taking instantaneous action yes so aries can become bit impulsive at times we can uh, have a tendency to blast on our partners or override what we want them to do rather than what uh, they want do themselves so we need to be careful that we do not uh, force ourselves on others okay so venus will be in aries and the larger slow moving planets like rahu ketu they are as usual in the sign of cancer and capricorn so rahu in cancer is basically focusing on the emotions which we have yes our conception of what is home and what is comfort and ketu in capricorn is telling us that look apart from being happy in your home in your comfort zone you also need to understand that you need to walk sometimes <laughs> all right and then moon will be in virgo in the beginning uh, time because the full moon was just there on 31st march and then jupiter is in libra so when jupiter is in libra it is in the vishakha nakshatra till Ju uh, and it will be in retrogression till 10th july so basically jupiter in libra tries to balance the materialistic and the spiritual sides yes of like uh, of uh, our daily day to day lifestyle because jupiter represents the higher philosophical abstract thinking yes and libra is a very materialistic sign so when jupiter comes to libra then uh, we can uh, have this uh, quest inside us that how can we properly balance our material and spiritual lives and especially vishakha nakshatra as the sign goes of something which is splitting vishak so this means that um, we need to sit down and make a note of the things that we are doing for our material progress and also those things which we are doing for our spiritual progress and then when we make down notes and then we need to make a structure a schedule by which we understand that okay this time will be for this activity the morning time as the brahma muhurt time comes yes the first uh, 90 minutes before sunrise that time is very important for spiritual practices generally yes so if the sun is rising at 5:30 sunrise then the brahma muhurt starts from 4 o'clock till 5:30 yes that's the approximate time so we need to understand that we have to do things in the respective time which they are to be done so if some mantras are to be chanted in the night then we do them in the night and if some are to be done in the morning we do it in the morning morning time is best unless the mantras are specifically to be chanted in the night unless that exception is there okay so now uh, when jupiter is in vishakha nakshatra then we uh, are forced to introspect and because it is retrograde so whichever houses uh, jupiter is ruling in our chart yes so for example if you are a cancer ascendant then jupiter rules the ninth house of spirituality and it also rules the sixth house yes so things pertaining to your health and physical well being and some competition some competitors and something which you are doing daily in a routine repetitive manner that those things can uh, become very lively suddenly because retrograde planet forces us to look back on the things that we were doing yes so that's what is happening with jupiter in vishakha but in vishakha we need to take care that we do not try to balance too many things otherwise nothing gets balanced all right 
then Mars and Saturn will be conjunct in the sign of Sagittarius. So this can create some sort of a friction in part things pertaining to whichever uh, areas Mars and Saturn rules in our chart. Yes, because they are natural enemies. But this is also a good time. This is a great time actually Mars and Saturn conjunction when it occurs in the sky. It's actually a very good time to strictly focus on the things that uh, that this conjunction is occurring yes so for example if you are uh, <coughs> if you are an Aries ascendant then this conjunction is occurring in your ninth house yes so then what happens is things pertaining to the ninth house yes you will put a lot of focus there a lot of discipline a lot of structure a lot of commitment a lot of duty which is Mars and Saturn so people say this is a bad combination this is a difficult transit but what I have seen in my personal experiences, this can act very beautifully if we know to use this energy in a proper direction. Now what Sagittarius? Sagittarius, the first 13 degrees has this Mula Nakshatra. So Saturn has been in Mula from October of last year and now it has entered Purvashada recently. And Mars also would have entered Purvashada by the beginning of April. So Mula Nakshatra where Saturn and Mars were till April 1st represents grassroots digging deep and uprooting things so whichever houses mars and saturn were ruling in the chart depending on your ascendant those things we were focusing very sincerely very seriously and whatever did not work we had thrown that out yes so for example if you are a scorpio ascendant saturn rules the fourth house right so uh, for you you might be focusing on matters of your education or on matters of your uh, home yes land property real estate all those things or feeling happy in life basically doing that which gives you happiness those things you might have been uh, focusing on and now when these two come in the nakshatra of purvashada purvashada is what basically purvashada is the nakshatra of faith all the beautiful qualities of sagittarius is found in purvashada nakshatra yes i'm not saying that uttarashada and uh, mula does not have good qualities i'm not saying that i'm saying but major majority qualities all the signs of divinity and uh, faithfulness yes surrender humility all those traits which lord krishna says in the bhagavad gita the 26 qualities of a great soul all these qualities are in the nakshatra of purvashara yes so now what happens is we uprooted those things which we do not, did not need or which were not serving us when mars and saturn were in mula and now we planted the new seeds, the new roots. And then now we are having faith that whatever we have planted will give us fulfillment in the long run. So we are uh, moving ahead in the journey. Yes. So wherever Mars and Saturn conjunction is occurring. So that is what I wanted to say for Mars and Saturn conjunction. Then Saturn will be moving retrograde from April 18th until September 6th. It will be retrograde. So whichever houses Saturn is ruling in the chart those things we will again go back and see what went wrong what went right of course when it goes retrograde it will again enter mula nakshatra after some time but it is very important that when saturn goes retrograde we become very serious with our actions whichever houses saturn is ruling because saturn is the planet of actions jupiter represents our thinking our abstract uh, way of bringing things together yes because jupiter is the teacher the guru tells you things from 10 different angles but saturn is the practical planet of karma so uh, if uh, you are a scorpio ascendant for example and then your saturn rules the fourth house then when saturn moves retrograde some things pertaining to education or homeland property you might revisit and do them again yes and this will be based on a lot of hope and a lot of optimism because it's in the nakshatra of purvashara and then afterwards it will enter mula so then you may again uh, encounter that you still need to plant some roots more deep all right and then mercury uh, will be uh, in pisces throughout the month because it will be retrograde and combust also then what's happening is this is how the month begins so on 14th we have sun venus conjunct in the sign of aries so sun will move into its sign of exaltation where it's very strong it will move into the nakshatra of ashwini so suddenly you will feel that after 14th or 15th that people are becoming very strong people are wanting to go and do things and achieve things yes 
because sun represents the focus and when the sun the uh, focus energy is in exaltation people feel very strong and then people will be very much motivated to be positive and to make goals in life yes and to execute them yes and to do things which uh, will ultimately give them fulfillment rather than just sitting and dreaming like in the sign of pisces so sun venus will be in aries and then on 16th there is again this new moon in the nakshatra of ashwini so now whichever house is aries is falling in our chart depending on that uh, we will have new beginnings yes the new moon so if you are aries ascendant this is like 16th is like a new beginning for your life yes once in a year you have a full moon in every uh, in your lagna so that is very important so similarly if you are a libra ascendant this new moon is happening in your 7th house 7th house of marriage partnership relationships so it can happen that you uh, your marriage can uh, undergo a new level of dynamics there can be certain things within the marriage that you are focusing yes and uh, you want to improve the dynamics of the marriage so if you are a capricorn then this will be in your 4th house pertaining to matters of education and then on 18th we have this akshay tritiya festival where sun and moon are both exalted sun is in aries and moon will be in the sign of taurus where both of them are exalted and venus will also be in the sign of aries and this is actually a very beautiful time because the luminaries sun and moon they are exalted yes so this akshay tritiya is very powerful so that we can uh, actually uh, do things and take new initiatives especially uh, there are a lot of marriages and weddings which happen during these times and a lot of Uh, good auspicious activity start because sun represents the ego the soul and moon represents the manas the mind the way by which you we perceive this world yes so when both are exalted that shows there's a very beautiful harmony yes so this akshay tritiya will be celebrated and i will speak about this in detail later so now uh, on yes so 18th akshay tritiya is there then on 20th we have uh, the conjunction of moon and venus in the sign of taurus although this is there for a very short time so moon and venus uh, uh, on eight uh, basically 18th 19th 20th and 21st these three four days are very good because uh, good for uh, doing things that actually make us happy because sun moon venus all three are very uh, happy because venus is an own sign in taurus and moon is in exaltation so No, and that too these two are very beautiful planets they are very sweet planets moon and venus so when they come together or even if they are nearby and when both are very powerful like here one is exalted and another is known sign so then what happens is we can do those things which give us fulfillment yes so 18 to 20th to 21st these three four days are very good to start new things actually or to work on exist or existing projects which we want to complete or finish yes and then 29th there is this again a full moon in the sign of libra so whichever house uh, this aries libra is coming in the chart those dynamics will become lively and then whatever uh, we started whatever initiatives we started as an individual in the sign of aries when sun and moon were conjunct now we will see that to what extent is it harmonizing with other people with the expectations of others with with what others want because libra is all about other people yes so this is what is happening and 29th as i said the full moon is there and finally on 30th jupiter moon are again conjunct in libra so it's a very good time to be positive because jupiter and moon when they are conjunct that shows there's a lot of positivity so the month is ending on a very good note and mars and saturn will still be in sagittarius rahu will be in cancer ketu will be in capricorn mercury will be still in pisces although by that time it would have started becoming direct and till the entire month of april it will still be in its debilitation in pisces and sun would be in its exaltation in aries and moon will keep changing signs and venus by the end of the month would have entered taurus as i said earlier all right so that is it from my side sun is moving into exaltation beginning from pisces to aries so a beautiful time to start new things to start new spiritual practices to work on things that we want to finish because pisces is a sign of completion also and then venus is also in aries the only thing we need to take care is this mars saturn conjunction in the sign of sagittarius we should not become too much fanatical about our 
ideals and what we think is right or what we think is wrong and because mercury is also in debilitation so it can happen that at times we can try we can try to impose ourselves on others which is not very good all right so if we take care of those things then this month looks very good with the akshay titya festival venus moving into its own sign after being combust for so long the entire month of february uh, sorry till 9th february venus was combust and now finally it is moving away from the sun and now things are becoming much better in pertaining to love and relationships all right and jupiter continues to be in vishakha in retrogression and saturn also turns retrograde by the end of april all right that is it from my side if you have any questions queries or comments then please let me know in the comments and whichever houses these signs are falling from your ascendant please look at those houses and then you try to see what is happening all right so there you go if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there below and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with those who want to know how the month of april is going to be all right and if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it okay until next time with another video bye bye see you